Let's start making a tessellation using these rectangular tiles. Here is one pattern we can form using rectangular tiles. Note that the tiles do not overlap and there is no gap between them. Here is another such pattern that has no gap between the tiles. And this is yet another pattern formed from rectangular tiles without overlapping or leaving gaps between them. So, we can say that rectangular tiles can form tessellations. The shapes that form a tessellation are called tessellating shapes. Rectangle is an example of a tessellating shape. Let's now try circular tiles. Here is the pattern we can form using circular tiles. Do the circular tiles form a tessellation? No, they don't. There are gaps between these tiles. The shapes that do not form a tessellation are called non-tessellating shapes. A circle is an example of a non-tessellating shape. Let's see where the triangular tiles form a tessellation. Here is the pattern we can form using triangular tiles. Are triangular tiles tessellating shapes? Yes, they are. They form a tessellation without overlapping or leaving any gaps. Let's now see where the pentagons form a tessellation. Here is a pattern we can form using pentagonal tiles. Do they form a tessellation? No, they don't. They do not form a tessellation because there are gaps between the tiles. Here are tiles of an interesting shape. Let's see whether the tiles form a tessellation. Look at the pattern. Are these tessellating tiles? Certainly they are. Here are the patterns we could form, Sam. Except the circular and pentagonal tiles, all other tiles form tessellations. You can choose any of them that you like. Tessellations are fascinating. Try cutting out several pieces of different shapes from a cardboard and see which of them fit together. Create your own game of tessellations. Have fun!